This is Health Call Online, a place for extended versions of interviews you hear in our weekly radio broadcast, the Health Call Radio Hour. Our focus today is a drug that is making all kinds of headlines because it's able to solve a problem so many people suffer, and that is obesity. Uh, it started out as a drug intended mostly for diabetics, but now new research shows it has pretty broad effects. And so let's dump into this with Greg Russell. He is pharmacist and founder at Fort Wayne Custom Rx, a compounding pharmacy that specializes in very customized treatments for patients with difficult conditions. Greg, gl- glad to have you back. Great to be here. So this is a very interesting drug. Of course, we're talking about some semaglutide. Uh, Wigovi, Ozempic, and Rebelsis are sort of the brand names for these drugs. And now uh, I think that the headline we want to get across today is the nation's pharmacists are stepping up and trying to address a shortage that's developed in these drugs. Tell me more about that. Sure. Well, you know, as we all know, uh, this, this drug was originated for, um, uh, for patients that have diabetes uh, because it found, they found that by adding it to patients that had insulin, uh, issues that needed insulin, that Ribelsis, um, Ozempic, and um, Wagovi, all these products help um, uh, help the insulin work better by slowing down or by being a glucagon-like peptide agonist. What that all that means is it's an assistance to help insulin work better, and they were able to find that blood sugars were working really good. And well, over the years as that drug's been out, they also noticed some other dramatic effects, which would be that there was an improvement in weight loss. And one of the problems we've always had with insulin and many of the other uh, medications used for diabetes is they promote weight gain. Mm Because insulin itself, as insulin levels go up, it tends to cause growth hormone to be released. It increases uh, the body's ability to move sugar into cells, which then increases some adiposity and or fatness. And and those are things that are kind of working against the patient with diabetes. So everybody was really excited about these drugs. And, of course, the manufacturer, the, you know, the, the first product was, you know, Ozempic. Um, they started making other versions of this and got them FDA approved under different brand names. The major, major problem we have right now is twofold. One is that uh, the drug is, has become expensive and many insurance companies don't cover it. And secondly, for patients that have diabetes – are at a difficult or a disadvantage because there's such a wide demand for it that they're having difficulty uh, getting that medication. So what is the cost if I don't have insurance? If insurance is not going to cover it for me or I don't have insurance, how much is uh, a course of treatment? Yeah, well, you know, uh, commercial, the commercial products are very expensive and um, they will t- typically run you about $1,000 a month or more if you have like a good RX coupon. And I can't even tell you what the cash price would be, but you know, these are, um, it, you know, even, you know, one dosage form of a tablet is $50, $60. So it's, it, it really can add up real quick. Okay. So how, how are pharmacists like you who compound and can have those special abilities how are you addressing this problem? Yeah, so, you know, this is something we kind of have to be careful of because the FDA has very strict um, requirements on how things can be compounded. And you just can't compound anything you want. A, you're going to have some patent infringement. So, you know, one of the things, some, some of the compounding pharmacists, we're not doing this, but some compounding pharmacists are either taking the commercial product and diluting it down into a lower dose version, or they're buying a, a comp, compounded chemical. Um, that is semaglutide. Um, There's been some problems with that because it's not the exact same chemical that the FDA approved. It's a different salt version. And so typically we are not allowed to compound without using a, you know, an approved product uh, that's out there commercially. So um, that, that's been fraught with some issues. So we're seeing some legal issues in our industry and, but some guys are still doing it. And of course they are getting some, they've been able to reduce the price and it's, you know, it, it is improving patients lives. You know, we're seeing some real, some impact. So let me just get clear on that. The, the FDA's recommendation against using compounded semaglutide doesn't apply to what you're doing because you're using the actual approved product. Yeah, we're using the actual tablets and grinding them up and making it. Now, this is unapproved. You know, it's an 
uh, unapproved FDA dosage form. So, you know, doctors are allowed to prescribe FDA unapproved mm -hmm. dosage forms. We have to make it very clear it's unapproved. And, um, you know, so the doctor has to determine whether or not that, that dosage form will benefit their patients. They have to do a risk versus uh, benefit analysis on that. But, so, yes, we're following the law. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let me – I just want to drill down on this because I think sure. there's a lot of confusion. So it's you're taking confusing. the the approved product – and grinding up these tablets into what form then? Yeah, so we're making a sublingual sus suspension. Um, and, you know, uh, people will ask me how we kind of came up with the dosing. So the ones of us that are doing this, we came up with a one milligram per mil dose. And how we did that is we know that the commercial product is much is a much higher dose than the injectable product. Well, why is that? Number one, it's a peptide, and um, peptides are very unusual um, hormones in that when you typically take them orally, the digestive tract breaks those drugs down. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do is we try to make a, a sublingual suspension. And so the sublingual suspension, um, even though there's not, there's not data to show, you know, there's no studies to show this, but we're kind of going by, um, you know, what we're hearing in the public, of what, our, what our customers are telling us. When we go a low-dose sublingual suspension, we're trying to bypass the gut and trying to get the drug to get enough levels that it works like the commercial product. It's not going to work probably exactly like the injectable. The injectable is probably going to be superior. But the benefit is we are able to use a product that's not in short supply right now. And we are able to, um, to give a product that's not in an injectable, and we're able to dramatically reduce the price on our product. So let's just explain that. Sublingual means under the tongue. So you're right. talking about a, a liquid that I just drop, un put it under my tongue. Uh, right. We a give a measure a day, or right. We give a measuring di de uh, device, and we use it uh, orally. So or uh, sublingual, excuse me, <laughs> under your tongue, and so. What you're trying to do is you want to hold that in your mouth as long as you can to get most of it to try to absorb sublingually. We know if you're going to swallow some, it's going to be inactivated. But the longer you can hold it in your mouth, mm -hmm. the better the absorption is going to be on that drug. And, of course, that's going to vary from people to people. Somebody who has really bad um, – has ba uh, really dry mouth might not get as good of absorption as somebody else who, who has normal. Okay, and how does this stuff – taste then is it if i've got a whole well, that, that was kind there. of the trick was trying to get it it's got a little bit of an aftertaste but it's not terrible you know we're okay. not finding a lot of objections and we had to formulate a suspension enough that it wasn't so thick or you know that that took us a little work a little time to, to come up with that and so am i doing this once a day a couple times a day you do this once a day and again here's how we kind of came up with the science on it and again it's kind of you know we have to maybe adjust it for everybody but uh, for each unique person um, to see that we're getting the results. But, but basically, we know that 99.2% of the drug is inactivated in the gut. And we know that kind of by looking at the – there are studies on that, that the oral dose has to be many, many more times than the injectable dose. Mm -hmm. So um, – and, and we kind of get that data from how the drugs used to treat diabetes, although we do not recommend you use our product to treat diabetes. OK, because you need a consistent product. And um, so we kind of came up with this. Uh, a group of compounders kind of came up with this and we kind of subscribed to the same same theory. And then again, the other thing is patience. This drug does not work overnight, whether it's injectable or not. I mean, when you hear the anecdotal stories. I lost 10 pounds the first week on it. Most people. The studies have shown have taken about 16 weeks to start seeing a noticeable difference. So that's four months. So it takes time. I see. So, the, yeah, I get it. So grinding up that, those, those tablets of the original product makes it available. And how much are you able to reduce the cost? What is this treatment going to cost me if I'm paying out well, of pocket, it, for example? L let's, just, let's just put it this way. It's, um, I don't know if by law I'm allowed to say on the phone, but it's, it's a dramatic – it's, it's about 10% of what we're finding the commercial products are. Wow. So a 90% discount over the commercial price. And, and the reason, again, is we try to price the products so the average person could come in and purchase it. You know, and Because we know that 90% of the insurance companies are not covering us. And that, that's a sad commentary. 
I mean, mm-hmm. I, I heard your your last talk on the you know what's what's wrong with the government's healthcare system, and I don't really want to get, go down that road. But we we see this all the time in our profession is that there are great medications out there, but people just can't afford them, or their insurances won't cover them. Right. Yeah. Boy, you know, there's a lot we could talk about there. It's it's interesting that this drug is uh, they're now finding that it may be effective in helping fight alcoholism and drug abuse. There's yeah. evidence that it helps reduce fatty liver disease. There are some cardiac benefits. And so it's amazing what they're discovering. As of, And it all ties back to the fact that when you lose weight, your health generally improves. Yeah, you're improving fat metabolism is what you're doing, too. So, you know, this is uh, there's all these other under the hood things that are going on that you can't see other than the weight loss. But it's, you know, you're reducing the amount. I mean, it's changing the brown fat to white fat ratios and all these different things. Um, so it's really, it is a very exciting project. And, and to be quite honest with you, the pharmaceutical industry is waking up to this and saying, hey, you know, it used to be a, an FDA approved drug had to lose, I think, 5% of the weight to be approved. Well, you know, I can gain 5% of my weight in a bad, bad weekend or lose it. You know, that, yeah, that doesn't right. really change the amount on my scale too much. Right. Uh, but um, now we're looking at, hey, can we develop drugs that lose 20, 30, 40 percent of your weight for the morbidly obese? And again, this drug, you know, when you look at obesity rates, the country's running about 40 oh, percent in yeah. general. And we're running at about, you know, Indiana's right up there with them. And we're one of the worst we, states. We and in kids, we're seeing obesity rates at 30 percent. And we know. At 30% obesity in children are just, we're setting them up for a lifelong journey of poor health. And we know, you know, whether it's diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, certain types of cancers, et cetera, we know that being overweight is not good. Now, I also, as anybody who's listened to me over the years knows I'm an advocate of, hey, the, you know, it's not a miracle drug. You've got to do some of the lifestyle stuff. And yeah. one of the things I think that's a benefit with this drug, it does help curb appetite. So this is a, a great time then to get into some diet counseling programs, nutrition programs where you can learn how to eat properly and try to get away from the sweet cravings and things of that that are destructive to our health. So I believe in exercise. I believe in weight you know, maintenance. I believe in you know, eating good meals. This is just another tool that you can use with your doctor to try to help get you there. So do doctors know that this is now available? If, I'm, if, if my insurance isn't going to cover it, I need to ask my doctor, hey, I need another alternative. Do they have right. to specifically recommend this form of the drug for it to be able, uh, we, to, available? We have several doctors now using it. So, you know, again, um, we have a lot of women's health doctors, for example, um, that are, you know, really taking notice about this drug. We mm-hmm. were getting phone calls before we did this drug asking us if we could compound this product from physicians' offices. Um, and of course, we were very conservative. We <laughs> tried to look through the data. We wanted to make sure we we're following the laws. I do not want to overpromote this as a, you know, a panacea, but on the flip side of it, I think it can be very helpful in the right patient. And again, we're looking, if you look at what the criteria is for people that are considered obese, you know, uh, over 30%, you know, BMI, patients that have comorbid conditions um, that, you know, they may be just overweight but have more comorbid uh, conditions such as diabetes. Of course, they're probably on some glutide already uh, or they have, you know, high blood pressure, heart disease, et cetera. But, you know, and just to make this clear for people who don't follow that as closely as you and I do, uh, one of the challenges is once you drop below a certain criteria, your physician uh, may still think this drug has value for you, but the insurance company will no longer pay for that uh, prescription. And so now you're facing that $1,000 a month. Um, even though it's helping you, you're losing weight, and that has so many advantages. But because you no longer meet the criteria for being diabetic, the insurance company is not going to pay for it. So this is where you can step in and fill the gap. Absolutely. And I, I, I really think there's some benefit to this product in general, uh, as long as you're being monitored. You know, if you have certain conditions such as thyroid medullary cancer or things like that, your doctor's mm-hmm. not going to prescribe it. Or if yeah. this drug is prone sometimes to cause constipation. So if you have uh, obstructive, ob- obstructive bowel disease, the doctor's not going to prescribe it probably. So, you know, 
This is why we work with our doctors and make sure we're given the information and we're not over-promoting it, but we do believe that there's some strong benefit to this medication. What, uh, what can I pair with this to make it even more effective? Is there, what's in the supplement world? I know you study that very closely as well. Oh, what's absolutely. There? You know, I, I'm a big person at, you know, when I start sitting back and I start thinking about commercial products, you know, what can we do to support them and make them work even mm-hmm. more effectively and help patients get to their end goal? And one of the things that I'm, I'm concerned about is, of course, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. You know, we're seeing a, this is the next crisis around the corner that probably we're not screaming enough about. And that's due to, again, high sugar loads, carbohydrates, tox, toxins that we're consuming and processed foods, et cetera. So what can we do to help improve that. And as we look at fat metabolism, the liver plays a super role in that. So, you know, first thing I want to make sure is I give you the nutrients to, that that will help support your liver health. So I like a product called MitoCharge um, that we have. It's a private label that we make, or, uh, that we have made for us by the Orthomolecular Company. Um, and that product has, you know, acetyl L-carnitine, which helps mobilize fat, helps, helps the mitochondria. It has things like alpha lipoic acid, which is a mm-hmm. free radical um, reducer and helps recharge your, your mitochondria. So it's got some different things as well as your, your basic vitamins in it. But uh, it's a wonderful product and it's a great, it, it doubles kind of as your multiple vitamin. Well, so give that's me one 30- product. Give me 30 seconds or so on what is fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Why is that a problem? Yeah, so what happens is, um, you know, we've all heard of cirrhosis of the liver, right? And, you know, we, we spend a lot of time talking about renal disease and heart disease, et cetera. But what's happening is we consume too many sugars and, or we consume th- things like high fructose corn syrup or we consume other additives the triglycerides get stored in the cells of those fats, um, and uh, as well as sugar. It gets stored in the, the, the cells, and over a period of time, that will cause damage. Now, the cool thing about fatty liver disease, you catch it early enough, it's, it, the liver is a great organ because it can reheal itself. However, we all, we all know, we've all heard stories of the alcoholics that can continue to do it. Well, what's the problem? What's well, the sugar that's being broken down by the alcohol that damages that liver over time? So we know that being overweight increases your risk for uh, fatty liver disease. So as an adjunct product, again, we are trying to help the liver recharge itself. Okay. And you may, you may read about that as NAFLD. That's kind of the acronym for it. And mm-hmm. you'll see that thrown around. Yeah. yeah you'll see doc- doctors really are, are starting to Take notice of that problem. Okay, so uh, that product was called MitoCharge, and that's just over the counter. I don't need a prescription for that, right? No, it's just a it's just a vitamin with some other nutrients for the liver. What else is on the shelf that you might pair with this compounded semaglutide? Yeah, we talked about detoxification programs. Um, mm-hmm. That would be something I would probably want to look at. Again, um, we have kits. Um, I, I typically uh, recommend one called Core Restore, but there are other brands from other, other high pharmaceutical companies that we carry. Um, and, you know, basically it's a step-by-step program uh, that you do seven days to 21 days. Usually most patients I recommend seven days, and we might do a repeat of, of seven days. And I usually recommend that you do that a couple times a year. And so it's got everything in the kit, tells you what to eat, tells you when to take the vitamins and, and stuff. So it's kind of a nice all-around uh, program. And that'll have things like N-acetylcysteine, inositol, choline, other things in there that help phase one and phase two, detoxification, and all kinds of other supplements in there. Um, another product that I like is um, um, Hepaticor. Um, Hepaticor is a, n- a newer product by Orthomolecular, and it contains things also that help support that liver. So another really great product that I like, and uh, it, it's got a couple key ingredients in it um, that, um, that help. Uh, one is it's, it's loaded with polyphenols, and you're going to hear about polyphenols more and more. You know, what's yeah. the coercion and res- res- resveratrol? We've heard all about them. Well, here's, here's more polyphenols in a mix, again, helping support and reduce that oxidative damage to the liver, as well as it's got aged uh, black garlic, uh, black aged black garlic, excuse me, in it, which again is another polyphenol that helps uh, support that liver. Amazing power of plants coming to the- Amazing power of plants. Yeah, eat your veggies, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so let's circle back for a second to the compounded semaglutide. How okay. do I talk to my doctor about this? Yeah, so what we, we have kind of put together some information that we can email doctors or fax over to the doctors. Or of course, we can print it off and give it to the patient to give it to their doctor. Uh, just kind of a frequently asked question sheet. Um, we'll, we'll put it out in our monthly newsletters, sign up for a newsletter, and you'll be able to download that. You can send that to your doctor if you'd like. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we're here to support information, uh, give the doctors, and try to use a little creativity and try to help solve a problem. Excellent. Well, it's fascinating. You know, we'll be watching this closely. The semaglutide seems to have so many benefits that uh, I now am, am reading that there are 74 different medications that follow the same path, currently under testing and being developed. I mean, this this has really opened the floodgates, so it's going to be very interesting to watch where this goes. And It really is. All, I think all of us as consumers, we, we've got to stay ahead of this because- We do. Uh, you you know, know, we, we talk so much about trying to take care of our own health. We're, right. We know our healthcare system is not perfect in this country, to say the least. And uh, you know, it behoves us to stay ahead of it. And if we're not protecting our health early on, um, we're, in for, we're in for a rude awakening, both financially and health-wise. I, I think uh, it, you know, if viewers want to listen to you know, start researching more, just Google the word cardiometabolic. There's so much interesting research in heart and the metabolism and how it's all together. This is the next big thing. And, and I think, um, um, I mean, I'm reading this stuff every week in different magazines, whether it's endocrinologist or uh, cardiovascular surgeons or whoever, you know, they're all looking at this now and um, research is going that direction. But you know what? We just hit it earlier here that plants, foods have a lot of this protective effect for us. Yeah, boy, that is so true. And if you can get them in concentrate form by, by a reputable manufacturer, uh, nothing wrong with that. Greg, yeah. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Always learn so much when I have you on the program. So good to have you. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you.